Hello, I'm live. Um, hi, it's Kaz, and um, I'm just filming a little Facebook Live here just to introduce my um, two stamp sets in my garden stamp set and the my indoor garden stamp set um, brought to you from Julie Hickey Designs and I'm really thrilled how these sets have come out and um, I've got lots of samples to show you and I'm going to do a little demo now I apologize in advance this is only my second Facebook live um, also I do have COVID at the moment um, so any sniffs or coughs or anything I do apologize I'm feeling much better than I did but I'm still unfortunately testing positive and, and woke up this morning really bunged up still so um, yeah apologies if I sniff I know it's very annoying <laughs> um, so hello to everybody I can see you all popping in your good mornings and hellos it's nice to have so many here I don't think I'd get many people here I just had to do it at a convenient time for me um, so yeah hi everyone I'm not going to go through your names because I'm just going to get cracking with my demonstration and my talk through the the stamps okay so here goes right so the first one I know Julie has done a uh, a talk through with the sets but this is my little talk through so this is my first stamp it's called in my garden um, I mean I love my garden I don't know about you and I'm lucky enough to um, work in a garden centre where I look after the house plants, but I do actually really love the the garden plants as well. And these are some of my favourites. I love lavender. I love geraniums. Um, so yeah, I've just put a few of my favourite plants and indoor and outdoor plants on these sets and I kind of had a vision of creating little scenes with them so that's why I've given you the tuft of grass and the stones adorable little bird I absolutely love the bird butterfly bee snail a little trail I desperately wanted a little little trail that's what I call it <laughs> It just gives you the feeling of movement of that the um, the little bees fluttering, fluttering and busying himself, buzzing around all the plants. So this is, as I say, the in indoor garden one. You've got four lovely herbs: mint, thyme, rosemary, and basil. You've got a trough of geraniums, the lavender, and then a little um, watering can full of mixed flowers. And then we've got some. Excuse me. Uh, some nice sentiments that all fit in the stick this is supposed to look like a plant stick um, actually have some here but these are all these ones are stuck together the kind of thing that you write the name of the plant um, on when you're potting up little seedlings or something I just thought it'd be a quite a cute little shape to use I didn't actually think it would be as helpful not helpful that's the wrong word but as useful it's a really good little shape and I'll show you on some of my cards and I know that Hazel's also made some fantastic things using just the the plant stick so you've also got happiest of birthdays a little birdie told me because I think this little fella's going to become a big part of my cards he's so small but he's just so cute um from my garden and just a note and as I've written there, there's 20 stamps in the set, so it's a small set, but you get so much. So I'm going to show you my samples. Um, I'll show you this one, actually. This was the first one that I made. This was, I just got the stamps from Julie, and desperate to have a play. I do hope, I, actually, I, think, I was going to say I do hope you can hear me, but I think you would have all been telling me you can't by now. So, um... Yeah, this was the one I got. This was the first little play I had. Didn't know what to do. It was a bit overwhelmed, actually, getting my designs in stamp. And I've just done a little scene with the potted lavender 
of course the little birds, some tufts of grass and the stones. A little birdie told me on the stick and used Julie's lovely um, dinky square dies. So um, I've embossed this one. So where I've just put a rubber mat underneath and it's given me an embossed line. And then obviously this one I've cut out and edged with green ink and given it some glitter glue just to finish off. So that's card number one. Um, this is another card I've made using in my garden. And this one I used a scoreboard and just tried to make up bricks from just using the scoreboard. I don't know if you can see, I just did little rectangles and then on the next line I did it sort of halfway through to give the impression of bricks. And then I cut it up and just stuck it on the card. And again, this is just a, a cute little scene just showing you sort of how I envisaged the stamp set to be used really with your, you know little potted plants your little snail it's just the the little details that I really like and yeah yeah the pebbles um such to me such a good way of of um grounding your your plants otherwise they're all floating in the air aren't they and such an easy stamp to use so there's that little scene there I love the little trail just gives you, as I say, a little sense of movement. Now this is another another little card I made. Super simple. I've used Julie's Dinky Rectangles, three of the potted herbs, and just coloured them in a little bit of um, gold card, gold glitter card that I found. I just, you know what, when I'm making cards, I have no clue what I'm doing. I just pick things up as I'm going. I'm just like, stamp this out. I would have stamped this out first and then I would have die cut it. And then I would have thought, oh, what colour card am I going to put it on? Oh, craft card. Then I would have looked through, just found this little bit. It's, for me, that's how card making is. It's organic. It, it grows. My cards grow. Um, that's just the way I do it. Other people have to have a firm plan. I mean, this is a blast from the past, a bit of raffia, but I think the raffia works really well with that um, this is another cute little scene that I've done using Julie's dinky circles the dinky rectangle and just creating it's quite hard to show this one because it's a a long card but yeah that little bird is just too cute I need to give him a name actually actually I think uh, suggestions for birds name would be cool because uh oh, look the little snail excuse my fingers i'm a as i say i'm a gardener so my fingers are terrible my fingernails are terrible um but yeah the little snail the little butterfly the geraniums the grass pebbles such a simple 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 idea but really effective dicky <laughs> i like that actually pauline that's really good Okay, so these ones here I've shown on a little video that I've done. These are just a set of cards. Um, basically, I make cards to sell at work, and these are just a variation on a theme. So I've just literally stamped off um, six of the circles using the dinky dies and stamped different images in the middle. Um, I've used various sentiments, various tags and embellishments and just created six little cards. As I say, variation of the theme. So I can't believe actually I haven't put a bird on any one of these cards, but I've got lots of bees, very busy bees. Um, when I was at work the other week, um, pre-COVID, um any any sign of sunshine and the bees are out all over the flowers outside we've got all the hyacinths and stuff 
the background this this is just an old stamp as i say i just grab things that's an old stamp i've had for years a wood wood background but a really handy one stamped it in perfectly i didn't want it perfectly covering the whole thing i've just inked it up and placed the um card on top of it and just rubbed the top it's not worrying about how much it comes out but yeah this one got two little potted herbs a little bee and a butterfly this one i've got a trio of herbs and two little busy bees and then this one oh i've got them all on there got the butterfly the little bees buzzing around happiest of birthdays so really simple just um a variation of the theme as i say i had a little session where i just stamped six six circles cut six craft circles and just you know built them up using sort of the same things but mixing them up a bit just to make them more interesting and it's just a quite nice way of getting a little batch done so they're all different but they're all similar so that's those ones Yep, on the floor now okay this one i think i've put on facebook or instagram both probably um i love this one i've used julie's dinky hexagons love the hexagons and just gone to town with all the little elements the grass the bird the bees the bird um, don't think I've got snail. Oh yes, I have got snail. Yeah, I think actually I made it my mission to use every stamp on this set, apart from obviously the words. Um, a little, a little splodge down there. So we ended up with a bee. <laughs> so uh, like we all do, you know, you've got any any little imperfections, you can always hide them with a a little bee or a flower. So yeah, I, I'm really pleased with that one. I've just cut the um, normal rectangle, not rectangle, um, hexagon, and then the one with the embossed edge put on the three largest ones. Really pleased with that. So yeah, pleased with that. And I love the, the sort of earthy colours um, with the terracotta and the green. I think, I've, yeah, I've done all the pots as terracotta pots. Just a really fun, fun time making that one. And then this is my last card um, that I made. Well, not the last card I made, but the last one I'm showing you using the In My Garden set. And this one I've used the plant stick as a fence post. And I've cut, cut, cut it down in some instances to make it into like a little fence and a little gate so and then you've got a little bird there little dickies there um yeah so i was really pleased with that i thought it was quite cute and the way i've positioned the word in so it just catches the top of the gate there i've put one of julie's little sparkly glosses on the top um what do i use to color my images M majority of these i think i actually used watercolor pencils but I will. I also use Distress inks um, and the regular ones, not the oxide ones. I do have both. I when I when the new ones come out, I buy both. But I mainly use the oxides for backgrounds and then the Distress inks for colouring in. So, um, but sometimes I mix and match pencils and Distress inks. But yeah, I was really pleased with that cute little surprise behind the gate um what julie mentioned might have been cute is to hang this actually on the gate um and put a different sentiment up here but i couldn't move it it was well stuck so yeah so that's my card for that one so this is a really versatile you wouldn't as i say you wouldn't believe how versatile this little plant stick is i mean it's excellent for the sentiments but for um building things brilliant okay so that's the in my garden stamp set and now i'm going to talk you through my indoor garden stamp set 
So here's my little card that I've made. This is a set of 14. Um, Julie was making me laugh last night with the plant names, obviously. There's proper names and there's um, common names for all of these plants. Uh, I've been working at um, Pro Farm Nursery Garden Centre for a couple of years, but not not taken on to work on the house plants. I was taken on to work work the till, but ended up doing the house plants, and I really love it. I love looking after the plants. <laughs> you're useless at it. No, you're not. Honestly, I go blank sometimes. But no, I, I absolutely love looking after the plants. And believe it or not, um, I find it quite creative in the benches, like how I set up the plants on the benches. Um, and when people buy a plant, you know, they leave you with a big gap. Always moving, always moving the plants around trying to dress them up, make them look appealing, put them in a nice pot and stuff. So even though I'm not working in the craft industry anymore as such, um, I really enjoy enjoy that side of it. Um, and the people I work with are fabulous. Anyway, back to stamping. Um, so obviously you've got the Monstera Delosa, um aka cheese plant most of us has probably owned a cheese plant in our time and then you've got the santiferia which is the mother-in-law's tongue and then this little one well i've coloured it as a couple of plants it, it's quite a generic little leaf plant and i've coloured it just green as a um hoya also you can colour it green and purple as a um tradescantia uh, wandering dude um, is the is the common name and sort of like the the it was it was known as another name in the past but it's not sort of um, accepted now I suppose um, we've also got the Calafia and this one's Calafia I think it's Rosa Picta or Rosie for short Calafia Rosie and it's a beautiful plant and it's got lovely bright rosy leaves um in the middle the middle parts are like a, a i don't know like a maroony rosy reddy pinky color and then we've got the um peace lily and i've gone uh spathylum as i say i've gone totally blank i couldn't remember what it was called but yeah And this one is a, and I've written it down because the pronunciation, well, the pronunciation is, um, it's an A, Ascenamphus, Ascenamphus, or otherwise known as a lipstick plant. Now that comes in with so many different leaves. I always say to customers when I'm speaking to them in the shop, um, that actually, because they go, oh, that's an Aeschylus, but this one is, and it looks very different. I say, well, kind of like dogs. A dog's a dog, but there are so many types of dog, you know. So that's that's sort of how I describe the plants as being. Well, that is an Aeschylus. This is an Aeschylus. They've got totally different leaves, but they are all the same. Now, I know my work colleague Sandy would would um, be able to clarify much more and. As I say, I, I am really a learner when it comes to um, house plants, so I've not been taught horticulturally at all, um, but I'm enjoying learning, and I learn every day. Uh, and then we've got some little cactuses here, just some little um, echeveria. Whoops, echeveria, lost the, lost the um, camera there. And then another little tag that's really handy. All of these will fit in, handmade with love, just for you. Home is where my plants are, and happy birthday. So that's that one. And um, I'll show you some samples that I've done for this. So this was really, really simple, quite a modern look to it. And I've just stamped a variety of the stamps onto card and used my daubers. Got some fat daubers. 
ink my fat dauber up and just twisted it on top so I've obviously used my large daubers for these and then the regular sized daubers for these and just thought that was quite funky really so that was just a if you don't like colouring in you can still make um yeah if you don't like colouring in you can still actually use the stamp to make some nice cards sorry if you heard that notification that's a, a work work whatsapp message <laughs> oh yeah mary that would be lovely wouldn't it bench beside a tree would be lovely yeah there there's a lot of things i could do for the um i think especially the in my garden set for the outdoor ones um lots that you could expand on to make the scenes right so this one is the i've colored it as a kind of like a tradescantia so you've got the hint of purple on there don't know if any of you have got uh tradescantia but i've i've got a nice little collection in my kitchen window they're such pretty stamps so yeah that one's super simple stamp the hanging tradescantia on i've used it as a edge of stamp around the edge and just just nice to bring another colour into a you know sort of very green otherwise green thing now this one I've used um, Julie's dinky hexagons and I've what have I done oh yeah so I've mounted it on <laughs> mounted it onto craft card um, cut into white card the the hexagons and then just put some of the plants so we've got the sansevieria the monstera and the the peace lily there that's a really nice simple card this one again and i've used the monstera as the main focus for this or the only focus really for this stamp the tops of the leaves onto a strip of card i've cut these ones out and glossy accent them and then put that one in i've just cut into the card there just to make it a bit more interesting ink splattered with some nice green ink um i think it's probably mode lawn i've used there on that one i remember posting on facebook uh like how do you splatter without getting on your face because I can't seem to create splatters without getting it all on my face as well part of the fun I suppose and a couple more so this one I've used the post the label die plant label die and cut it into little bits to make like a small plant stand Sensevieria, the Aeschylus and the Peace Lily. So they look quite cute. Really simple, um, dinky rectangle. No square. Sorry, I'm not. Don't know my shapes today. So dinky rec, <laughs> dinky square, and a little bit of edging using Hazel's papers, just to give it like a natural look. So that's that one. And then again, with the uh, as with the last one, I wanted to create some cards to take to work. So what I've done here is the same variation of a theme. This time I used a square instead of the circles. So I cut the cell six squares, panels, six of the panels in this lovely um, planty paper. I've used a different background again not not stamping it perfectly wanting it just to give a hint of like newsprint in the background and also I dug out my old punches my old woodware punches um, created the a, a mask and just did a bit of masking through so as I say um, evolving my cards evolve i do one bit then i do another bit then i do another bit and then i just like yeah this is okay and then i go right that's it i stopped so got this one with the rosy peace lily 
got this one with the rosy, the Centiferia, the cactus. This one, cactus, peace lily and Centiferia. So just a variation of the theme. So this one, I've used my Woodway Punches, Monstera, different paper in the background. This one, two of the punches. Again, just random in the background. This one decided to stamp on the Monstera, Monstera leaf. So, you know, as well as obviously using Julie's stuff, you can raid your stash for any leaf dyes stencils that you can add just to zhuzh them up a bit okay oh thanks hazel thanks for watching <laughs> right and the last card that i've got to show you and then i will just do a little demonstration so this one, again, I've used a plant label and I've created this lovely A-type frame. We've got, we have these at work and I always love dressing it up with the lovely pots and plants that I can find, anything I can find, maybe colour theme it or something. But I've just gone to town and, and I've put every single plant from the collection on onto this A-frame and had great fun just cutting cutting these little plant labels and building building a frame I mean you can just go to town with it used Hazel's lovely happy birthday stencil in the background I've used my little pebbles here yeah I thought of your work when you saw this card yeah definitely I know I do love my um, A frames and bits of anything I can find I'm a, I'm a real magpie at work and if there's anything that I can think I can use for display um, purposes, um, props or whatever, or I, I grab them and I've got a little cupboard and it's tiny cupboard um, and I'm sure everybody laughs at it but, you know, I don't care. I just chuck, there's just random stuff in there. One day it will be handy. <laughs> This card, um, Marilyn, is a 8x8 card, so this is a big one. I wouldn't, don't normally make 8x8s, eight only as a, a special sort of showcase. These ones, I believe, I'm just looking for my ruler, because I have, I've moved everything about to fit. So these ones are 5x5, five 5x5. Five. Five by five. Um, yeah, so 5x5, five five, A6. The occasional five by seven i i do mix it up quite a bit but yeah these these ones are five by five and that one's an eight by eight um a few a6s i've done and um yeah that's it so i feel now i would just have a little go at making a card whilst you're you're there and um i thought i was just going to re recreate this little one so I've already die cut Julie's Dinky Circle. Love this one with the embossing. Whoops, there you go. You've got the embossed, um, embossed dots and stitch lines here. Really lovely. And what I did was I just stamped directly onto that. So I'll just do that. So excuse my stamps, they're filthy. I tend really to only stamp with black ink, so therefore I don't really don't really clean them to be honest. Naughty girl. So I'm just gonna stamp the geraniums here. And the lavender next to it. Any perils of not cleaning your stamps is that you uh, run the risk of inky fingers. I've always got ink on my fingers. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp my lavender there. Okay, so they stamp beautifully as you can see. And then I'm going to use this smaller block for my 
these are just because these are small images I'm inclined just to use um, a block rather than a stamping press they stamp really lovely so what I'm going to do now is build up the the ground so this is my little stone stamp and I love it seems to just be seamless and you can just stamp it where you want doesn't matter you don't end up with a any sort of real obvious gaps or anything in it you can just go to town I mean on the one with the the gate I you know almost created a path brought it down right down between the grass we've got grass here and grass here and I've almost made a path of it and using different colours of brown for this one I'm just using the vintage photo okay so that's my stones and then I'm gonna bring in my grass and I use mowed lawn I've used mowed lawn for this um, I've also used pilled paint as well that looks quite nice but again just building up a little scene um, just really fun to use and I use the small tuft of grass here as well slightly denser so you can sort of add it next to or slightly in front of the other one okay so now we need the little bee now the little bee when he's dirty he's quite hard to see he's so small but he's just so cute and I really needed him in the set so just very gently just gently gently kiss it onto the paper because it is such a small design and and likewise with the bee trail as well this little thing um just gently kiss it onto the ink pad and then there just he's buzzing away because i've disturbed him so i'm letting you into the inner workings of my crazy mind here and lastly i will just add a little butterfly as well but it's up to you whether you use the, the trail for the butterfly or whether you just want to save it for the bee now i've messed up there but never fear that's why they that's why they invented micron pens so there you go just filled that in right now i'm going to stamp the plant label onto a piece of card here as you see i'm being very frugal cut cut some squares off of here before but oops it's moved a bit there let's do it again it moved before i could uh, put the rest of it down There you go, that's better. And I'm going. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get the little bird and can ink up, ink him up. But I'm only going to stamp the bottom of his. Can you see? I'm stamping his legs and the and a tiny bit of his body there. Okay. And then I'm going to put one of my sentiments in, so I'll just give you just a note like I did before. My fingers are getting more and more inky. I'm running the risk of putting a blob somewhere. There you go, just a note, the bird. Okay, so let's stamp the bird again in entirety. You can just go there and then I'm just going to cut this out quickly with a pair of scissors. 
my inky fingers. I'm chopping him off, just leaving his legs there. Reason being, I want him sitting on the stick. I'd never be able to cut his legs out, I'd never be able to cut him out, but I want him sitting above, so what I do, and now I'm just going to sit down, I've been standing up the whole time, so now I'm going to be colouring in, so I need to sit down, and I'm getting very hot, take my scarf off, sorry that I, well not sorry, I'm not sorry that I didn't, didn't say hello face to face, because I, I look dreadful, as I say, I've um, had COVID for a week and I literally um, haven't put any makeup on for days. Half-heartedly done my hair. I just look a mess. <laughs> you really wouldn't want to see me. Right, I've got a bit too much water there. So I've just started colouring in. So just using a water brush and gently taking some of the colour off but sometimes when you first start colouring you do find on a session I find that the the brush is just a little bit wet until you get it nicely flowing and then it will and then it will sort itself out so I've, I've done a little brown bird there obviously on that one I did a little blue bird I, I don't know why I love colouring my little birdies as little blue birds just think it's cute it's slightly whimsical so I'm just cutting him out here sorry I'm, I hope I'm on in shot so it's a bit fiddly but not as fiddly as he would be if I was cutting his legs as well chop the most of it off and then I can tidy him up a little bit. Let's get rid of oh look at him there, he's so cute. Gonna put a little bit of glue on the very bottom of him. Yeah. There you go. Sorry if it's not the most great way of sticking him on but I just had to do do it how I could not necessarily best for camera shot so there you go look there he is he's sitting proud of the stick but his little legs you haven't had to cut them out so now I'm just going to color in my little images here so as I say I just using um my watercolour pencils here, taking the colour off the end of the pencil and then colouring the image in. What I try to do, what I normally do is just add like a wash first, so that's my initial wash of colour and then I will maybe add more, maybe under the the leaves here, the shadow of the leaves, add it a little bit darker and build it up. It's always, you know, easier to build the colour up than to take away if you put on too much at the beginning. So again, a wash of colour on this one. And then you can leave the to dry um, between, you know, like the first wash and then just add in more. Sometimes it takes a bit better. But just building the colour up there. Um, if you want to soften the pebbles a bit, because it's water-based distress ink, you can just like touch the top. You don't have to colour the whole thing, because otherwise it... it you know what's the point of having the stones if you're gonna color through the whole lot but that just softens the softens the look up a bit and then I'm just gonna try and find my favorite green pencil it's my favorite green pencil this one just I just love the color of this so 
um, this is my go-to pencil for green now these images are very small um, you don't need a lot of colouring skills for them I'm just touching where the leaves are I'm not worrying if I'm going over the line it's just you know that obviously the lines are there to guide you where the the leaves are but also you know don't worry like with the lavender for instance you you can't colour in the the tips of the lavender just you can't just colour in the green leaves here um, so I normally go for the leaves first and then I will just add a sense of green everywhere like that yeah and then um, sorry I know I'm very aware that I'm, I'm in a lot but the more aware you are the more you do so I'm just going to give a little sense of purple up on the lavender tips here Again, not worrying if it goes over, you know, the edges. Oops, sorry, I sniffed then. Um, and I'm going to take the colour off for my geraniums. I've got no idea if there's any questions. I will have a look in a minute. Again, just touch in. The very tip of my paintbrush here, my water brush, just to bring in the colour. This these look lovely. I mean, red geranium is my favourite. I think. I'm um, sorry about that. So red geranium is my favourite. I think. Um, followed closely by like a hot pink, but geranium has to be one of my favourite garden flowers. And um, yeah, definitely a must have for my set. These two, my favourites. There you go, a little butterfly coloured in there. Um, try and add a little bit of a wash here of very light blue. So I've just gone on with my brush that's wet and. Um, just helps the colour move if you if you wet the background first, just for a very subtle um, colour wash, just to give it like a hint of hint of sky or hint of a background. So there you go, that's that done. On the original one, I've obviously edged it in blue. I'm just going to get a sticky fixer. Oh, yeah, maybe next time, Wendy. Um, yeah, I just... Honestly, you wouldn't want to see me. <laughs> you wouldn't want to see me on a good day, but... On <laughs> Covid-stricken? No. Uh, funny. I was chatting to Junie earlier, she was trying to give me guidance on like the best way to have my camera and um, I just said, I'm not showing my face. She said, that's fine. I flipped it around earlier and I just, it was like from below, you know what we're like, us women. Um, it was not a pretty sight. There you go. So I've just stuck that on some 3D pads and brought him up and if I just use my door bar it's probably got enough ink just to edge maybe not probably do with a bit more ink than that but never mind you get the gist of it get the gist Hang on, let's have a look tumbled glass is my favorite one for doing the edges Normally I've got enough ink on me dauber to do it, but obviously I must have rubbed it hard last time I used it. I tend to just use a dauber. This is my blue dauber. All shades of blue would be used on here. 
um, but the majority of the time it will be tumbled glass one of my favourites okay so we've got that bit done and then this is just a A6 card and all I did was find a piece I mean I'm sure we've got bits like this all over the place scraps of um, card so I've just found this little scrap this morning um, nice green gosh I think this is very many years old many many years old and uh, don't know if anyone of any any of you would recognize that but um yeah long time ago i had that piece of paper not always save scraps like that i mean that's a decent sized scrap that one and i'm just going to cut it off here and stick it down no, this one's a lot more subtle actually than the other one could 3d this up it would look nice 3d'd up but i'm gonna just stick it flat and then obviously you can just add some glitter glue got some stardust stickles here always brings things to life with a bit of stickles and I got this one off Hazel um, ordered a couple the other week because I was fed up with my inferior glitter glues can't beat stickles in my eyes so just adding some to the flowery bits there maybe the butterfly wants a little bit maybe the beetle wants a little bit there you go it's just a very simple card and i'm just showing you how to use my indoor no not my indoor my garden stamp set how i envisioned using the the little grass and pebbles and all the little elements that just bring it together to make a little scene i mean i absolutely love everything that the the um, other design team members have done and I really must thank them for all the cards that they've done they're so inspirational um, doing things that I wouldn't have thought of and okay this is how I envisioned them but what they did with them when they got them was obviously how they envisioned them and um, it's just really really lovely to see and obviously a huge thank you to Julie and Paula for um, taking on these designs. Um, you know, there's always a risk there that nobody's going to like them. But Julie said that they've, they've been well received. So I'm really, really pleased. Thank you. I would love anyone that makes um, anything with any of my designs. If you can just like hashtag Stamping Kaz and that way i'll get to see them so if you're on facebook or instagram i think you can just put hashtag stamping cares and i should be able to look up that hashtag i think um or just say um share them obviously on the new julie hickey a friend of julie hickey's um group because obviously that's what that group is perfect for for sharing sharing all your ideas um i'm gonna stand up now and see any messages Thank you for all your comments. Um, thank you, Josephine and Lorraine, Hilary. Yeah, I know. I've yeah, I've I've I'm coveted. I really thought I might be um, negative today. I first tested positive last Thursday. Um, I really really hoped I'd be negative today. Desperately need to go and get some shopping. <laughs> Thank you for your lovely words and um, yeah, thanks for joining me this morning and I will hopefully be back soon because um, I think I'm planning on doing a a live once a month over on the Friends of Julie Hickey. So yeah, really lovely if you could join me again. So thank you and you all take care. All right, bye.